Yesterday's surprise of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Are you still in the hangover or a? <laughs> Father, I woke up this morning at 4 a.m. Ah, oh, that. I even took a screenshot. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, so that's it. Yesterday's film. Yeah. I didn't think of all the um, the Holy Spirit gifts. Yeah. That I so how many of you could uh, get up at 4 o'clock exactly? Ah. Mm -hmm. oh. I woke up. No, I, I woke up. At very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. So this is a, yeah, yes, John. So no, I wasn't here yesterday, but I, I'm, I, I'm so confident that everyone's going to share everything with me. <laughs> but, Amen. but the thing about it was, I was at Mass yesterday, and yesterday's gospel was the shortest gospel, was the most yeah. profound gospel. Oh. Yes. Because, and I even asked people who were perfect. No problem. So I welcome John. John is actually the. I want to share this. I want to share this with you. Come, come, come here. Sit here and preach. I'm very shy. Wait a minute. John is actually the John is actually the main organizer. No, no, Peggy is the main organizer. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, the name in the fire is this is that man whose name is in the fire. Now he appeared only at the last moment. Yes. Yes. Come on, speak. Even when you come at the eleventh hour, you still receive. It. Yeah. <laughs> as long, the most important as long as you're open. No, I just wanted to share with you yesterday that yesterday's gospel was the shortest gospel but the most profound gospel because this woman said to Jesus, blessed is the woman who bore you. And he says, no, no, more blessed is the ones who listen to my words and keep them. So do, when we listen, do we hear? <clears throat> so then, didn't I just flicked over him? Wasn't I led then to read? Hebrews, and it says here. That is today's reading. Is it? 412, yeah. He Hebrews. What is it? The rich young yes. man. Wow. Okay, so, so Hebrews here, it says here, dear, dear person, because first of all, if you go to Hebrews Chapter 3, yep, even before that, if you go to Hebrews 3, 7, it says a warning against infidelity. Now, we look out into the world and we're worried about infidelity, but Jesus says, if you don't listen to my word and keep it, you're guilty of infidelity in your heart. Because it's what he says, a warning against infidelity. Listen to what the Holy Spirit says. If only you would hear God's voice today. And then further down it says, their hearts are always going astray. So if if we're listening to different voices, our heart is being pulled in different directions. Amen. And then further down it says, <coughs> and this is ties in because do we, if we listen with faith, so the, the message I felt for all of us today was to listen with faith. No doubt. Because Our Lady, the Word of God was sown in our heart. And because if the word of God is sown in your heart, mm -hmm. there is no room for doubt. Mm -hmm. And that Satan put a seed of doubt in Adam and Eve's heart. Mm -hmm. So, and then it says down here, we are now to enter, oh no, it's right here. But the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united, united with those who heard it with faith. That's the message. Okay. And for 12, you read up to that. Oh, yeah, and for 12, that is today's second reading. Oh yeah. The word of God is powerful. For the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the division of the soul and spirit, of giants and marrow, and judges the intentions and thoughts of the heart. Amen. Of the heart. Amen. Amen. So this is your catechism to preach. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that confirmation. That's right. Amen.
Yes. Now, so I should tell you, yesterday's your sharings was so great work of the Holy Spirit. I could not, uh, and I told also, but once again I am telling, in many charisms workshops I conducted, but we never had such a fruitful result. We, we, miss the afternoon. First, eh? we miss the afternoon. Don't worry. No problem. It is Holy Spirit kept your plate for today. Your portion. <laughs> your portion is kept in the fridge to be given to you today. So he don't he will not deprive his children even if they are not there. Isn't it, mommy? Yes, yes. When one child is not there, the mommy keep the portion ready yes. for next day. Okay, now, uh, so now, practically, and today the Lord spoke to me to focus more on anointing, anointing. Charisms, you have the charisms. You have started seeing the charisms working. So it will work as you practice. So today we are now, <coughs> sorry. We are now more, little, little bit more on the personal prayer. Rather we are going to pray that. And then we should also focus on Anointing, anointing. What is anointing? In First John chapter two twenty-seven, John's letter, First John chapter two twenty-seven. Saint John, in his great wisdom, right here. As for you, as for you. <laughs> it's very interesting. As for you, the anointing that you received from Him remains in you. See, we often ask, give me, give me, give me, give me. But we never recognize what is already given to us. The anointing we received through baptism, no one can take it away. What are the three anointings? The priestly, kingly, and prophetic anointing. As I maybe I explain this, but uh, our difficulty is when I explain first time, half of you are not here. When I explain second time, those who were here were not there. <laughs> so. Now I am explaining third time. So somebody who I have not heard yet must not miss it. That's the reason. We never, I never knew up to the age of 40, although I was born and brought up in such a very good Catholic family. My parents were very good models. Every day I was, we, we were 10 children and two of them when we went early, but eight of us were taken in the front row of the church every day. And every day, evening, we had about 45 minutes family prayer. And my parents were perfect model. I have no doubt. <coughs> about. But yet, nobody taught us that you have a priestly, kingly, and property anointing Till such time I learned from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. No priest ever told me this. So this is our situation even now in the church. Certain things we have to learn from the available 
resources the church is provided for us. So catechism of the Catholic Church is something very important for our growth. It is known as apostolic constitution. Can you read it? Yeah. See this. Apostolic constitution. Fide depositum. Deposit of faith. I'm showing this in the camera for people to see this. So, if you are a citizen of Ireland, nobody has to tell you you have to obey the constitution of the Ireland government, correct? Otherwise, you will be caught by the police. And you cannot say, no, I don't know the constitution. If you have a driving license, you are supposed to know all the rules. You cannot say, I have a license to drive anywhere I want. <laughs> so when we are a Catholic, we must know the constitution of the Holy Catholic Church. And this is it. I want to show this. This I, I have several books like this. I used it so much that I am not able to use further. Now, <laughs> this is also already torn because see this, because I am using it. Your book may be very nice and very tidy. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, this is something I want to tell you to grow, to grow in the spirit. St. Augustine always says, Holy Spirit will be more anointing you when you love the church. Because the Holy Spirit is given to the church. In paragraph 797, 797, see the numbers of the catechism automatically come to me like I quote the Bible passage itself. 797 says, like the body, or like the soul is to the human body, the Holy Spirit is to the body of Christ. Pay attention, like the soul to the human body. See, human body, human body has life because of its soul, right? When our, when our soul depart from the body, what will happen? What is that process say? Die. She is a nurse. She saw that at time. Correct? You saw that. When the human body, when the soul goes away from the body, the body becomes completely cold. You cover it with the white cloth and wrap it and put it in the fridge. <coughs> Correct? So, human body is so active. Now we say, today's reading, the word of God is living. What is living means? Lebendig. That is the German word. Lebendig. Living. Now you see my hand, if I show like this, it is like paralyzed. My hand can be paralyzed, so that is not living. But it's dynamic. That is, word of God is living. And it is active. It penetrates into your marrow. Where is marrow? Oh, Inside the bone. So it did not say it penetrated into the bone. It is understood when we when it is said it penetrated into the marrow. Because it cannot penetrate into the marrow without penetrating the bone. Understand? So it is understood the word of God can penetrate into the bones and joints and to the mind and the soul, so into the three dimensions of our whole human personality. So, point is, our body has life because it has a soul. 
but we never realize it so much. We never feed the soul. Our body we feed three times at each day. We feel hungry, but our soul also has a hunger. Our soul also has a thirst. Our soul also need feeding. Okay, now the point I want to bring home was one thousand. I'm sorry, seven ninety-seven says, like our body is animated by the soul. So, what the soul is to the human body, the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ. Who is the body of Christ? What is the body of Christ? Yeah. Which is the church. Church. Church means who? Us. Who? Us. 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 We are all. <coughs> to this spirit of to this spirit of Christ as an invisible principle is to be ascribed the fact that all the parts of the body are joined one with the other and with their exalted head. Who is the exalted head? Christ. For the whole spirit of Christ is in the head. <laughs> the whole spirit of Christ, sorry, the whole spirit of Christ is in the head. The whole spirit is in the body. The whole spirit is in each of the members. Ah, this is a great saint, Saint Gregory. No, no, Saint Irenaeus. So, the Holy Spirit makes the church the temple of the living God. Okay, I don't read much of it because it will be very stressful for us, but I give you a taste of it. Do you get now a little idea I should get a book like this? Yes. Sure? Sure? You must. Because when you have to grow in the charisms and in the anointing, you must grow with the church. With the church. And I tell you, one of my uh, providence I received was 30, 33, 35 years back when I first came into the experience of the Holy Spirit, I was immediately uh, happened to speak to a group of priests. Uh, that is another way of charism. Th that was because I was an engineer even at that time working, but side by side, wherever I go, the Lord started using me. So one day I went to a new city, to a big uh, factory for installation of some heavy equipments. I was an expert in heavy equipments, equipments weighing 100 tons, which others are not able to do, called Thomas Paul. That was the say in those days. Such expert advice I had. So when I, but even though when I go there, I go to the first thing I find out where is the parish church, where is the parish priest, I talk to him in the evening. So it so happened, I began to speak my God experience and the word of God. The time is gone for God, three hours, three hours. <laughs> then I realize it's already late night. So father said, don't worry, I will take you in my motorbike and uh, give you a ride to the place where you stay. Okay, very good. Three hours in one stretch I was speaking to him. And so he saw my precedence or the place where the factory has given to me to stay those days. And next day morning at nine o'clock I was about to go to the factory then I heard the motorcycle's voice mm -hmm. and I see this priest has come, coming, coming again. I said, what happened, Father? 
Thomas called, I am in a trouble. He said, what happened? Today there is supposed to be a gathering of priests and religious of that deanery, you know. Deanery means the area where a few churches are united, that is called a deanery. A deanery meeting of the priest and religious for a, a recollection, for a one day retreat. Oh, very good idea, I said. But that priest, preacher who was supposed to preach this retreat, telephone now, he is sick with the diarrhea. He cannot come. Oh, so what? So I want to invite you, you come and preach. <laughs> <laughs> I, I started laughing. I said, I never spoke to priests and religious. How can I preach? I never, I, I, did, I don't know that. No, no, no. Yesterday night, three hours you preach to one priest. <laughs> oh, that was only a sharing of my God experience. Exactly, that is what is preaching. Oh, if that, I can say the same thing. That's all. You exactly say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Charism. And then I said, okay. I rang up my office. I said, today I have some urgent appointments, so I'll come in the afternoon. And I immediately went with him to the, in the motorcycle and there... The, the stage was ready, all the uh, priests and religious they ready and uh, this priest introduced, this is Thomas Paul, he has come from Mumbai, that's a big town, you know. So they felt a good thing, a person coming from Mumbai. He's an engineer, but he is also a preacher, he has a very good God experience, he spoke a little more about me to make the priest convinced that. <laughs> and I never knew at that time in a priest retreat you have to speak some 40 minutes only or 45 minutes, then you are, there has to be a break and the time for reflection, then after one hour another talk. I don't know all these things. I began to preach again when I looked. It was already three hours or so. <laughs> three hours! <laughs> but the, then this priest was telling, Thomas, you have a very good gift of preaching because we normally as priests, we never sit for more than 45 minutes. <laughs> and you made us to sit three hours. <laughs> And all what you were speaking was so theologically strong and very inspiring. <laughs> and then one priest came and asked me, that's what I wanted to say, have you read Dominum Vivivivicandum of Pope John Paul II? I cannot even pronounce that word. Vivivivicandum. Dominum Vivi. So he said that is the encyclical of Pope John Paul II on Holy Spirit, Dominum Vivificandum. I wrote it down, I said then I must read it. And then in the next possible time, I, as soon as I came back to Mumbai, I went to the big bookshop and found out that book and I bought it. That is the first encyclical I read was on Holy Spirit then that is the best encyclical of Pope John Paul II out of all the 14 encyclicals. And from that time I got to speak about Holy Spirit with complete authenticity. And that is why I want to say I could start speaking. The Holy Spirit led me to the real teaching of the church. Therefore I never made any mistake and after that, I got the Catechism of Catholic Church with a lot of strong teachings. So every time after a retreat, all the bishops say, your teaching was true to the Catholic doctrine. 
Therefore, we want to promote, we want to invite you. So that's very important for us. Maybe somebody may not say, but somebody, it is our duty to teach, to learn the teaching of the church. Now all these things I said because today morning the Lord said, you speak about the anointing. So the word of God came today in the first John chapter 227. 227, note it down. It says, as for you, the anointing that you received from him remains in you. Again, I, I, am, I cannot go further. You must believe you already have an anointing. Understand? You already have an anointing. Through the baptism, through the confirmation, and also through the Holy Eucharist. Every day in the Holy Eucharist, the epiglesis, in the epiglesis, epiglesis is this, Father, you are holy, the fountain of all holiness. All holiness and life come from you through Jesus Christ by the working of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, send thy Spirit upon these gifts that get due fall and transform them to the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is coming and this bread and wine is beginning to transform like in the wedding at Cana, the water changed to new wine. Water is oxygen and hydrogen. The molecules. Wine is, you know the molecules of wine? Anybody know? Molecules of wine? CH3, CH2OH. CH3, CH2OH. That is the molecules of wine. That is the molecules of ethyl alcohol. So, so the point I want to bring home is this, the, the basic molecules of the substance was changed. That is called transubstantiation. That is what anointing will do for us. The anointing is the work of the anointing is a transformation, a radical transformation. Radical means from the root, radish, from the root. Water is God's creation, but the root of that water, the molecules of that water is changed to a new wine, completely different. Do you want something like that? Yes, yes or no? Yes. And do you see that is what is needed for this country yes. and the whole world? Yes. And that is what exactly Jesus' purpose. That is what exactly all these charisms are doing. The charisms are supernatural power of God which work radically. St. John Paul II, in one of his an apostolic letter called Oriental Lumen, wherein he spoke in paragraph 11, which is called Theophorical. The word Theophorical means the bread which is a material and the water which is material is transformed through the sacraments so that this material bread become the body of Christ and, and carrying God into us. This bread. Bread become body of Christ. The water and wine become 
the blood of Christ and this water which is used in the baptism carrying the most holy trinity into our life. So the baptism is used in the water, the water is used in the baptism in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, holy water. In the name of the Holy Spirit, I baptize you. Is there any baptism possible without pouring this water? No. So this water becomes a theophorical, a material which, which transmit God into our life through the anointing. The oil, which is very famous, the word anointing oil. Right? The same word is used anointed bread a bread which is consecrated in the in the in the tabernacle is a anointed bread so the water when uh, water on the easter night is blessed for the for the baptism baptismal water it is anointed water so the priest with his one big finger he take the chrism oil and dip into this water and he pray, O oh Lord, send your Holy Spirit into this water and anoint this water to become the womb of the church to give new birth to this child in baptism. That is how the blessing of the water takes place. These are all I am expressing from the little knowledge I know about anointing. So if the bread and the water can be anointed, how much more is the anointing in every human being? And what are we doing with that? That's the point. We are, sorry to say, some of us are ignorant about the anointing and even some of us know this, we don't know how to use this anointing. That's it. So we need to recognize the anointing. So once again I <laughs> say this is the fourth time I'm reading, 1268 says, the anointing you received in the baptism through which you have the priestly, kingly, prophetic mission. And here St. Paul again, I read it again, verse 27, 1 John 2, 27, As for you, the anointing that you received from him remains in you, so that you do not need anyone to teach you. But this anointing teaches you about everything. Uh -huh. The anointing teaches you about everything and is true and not false. Just as it taught you, remain in Him, in Him. Who is that in Him? The Lord Himself. Okay. Let us praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I remember this song because of this word, the, the, the ten virgins, five of them had oil in their lap. The other five had no oil. What was that oil? That is another teaching, that oil was the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But there was another fight, they had no anointing of the Holy Spirit. They did not have the reserved oil. They must know the anointing will reduce and they should keep pouring. Therefore we see, give me oil in my lamp, give me burning, give me burning, give me burning, give me burning. Give me burning. Give me burning. Give me burning.
Once again, give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning till the end of day. Okay. So only that point you take that so that you will become prudent virgins. Today's gospel is about a young man who came to Jesus and going back without receiving eternal life <laughs> because he had no oil, he had no wisdom. He came, he saw the, the eternal life but he could not receive it. So the anointing every, in every day in the personal prayer so yesterday I explained about the personal prayer. Now, let us make a little prayer now, okay? In the personal prayer, what is most important in the personal prayer is we must, we must pray to Holy Trinity in you. Holy Trinity. And the Holy Trinity is the source of all anointing. The source of all wisdom the source of all grace. So that make me to say, what is grace? What is grace? What is grace? What is grace? Paragraph 1197 in Catechism, grace is the participation of God's life into human life. 1,997 in the Catechism teaches us what is grace. 97. Grace is participation in the life of God. I, I show like this. Now take your left hand down and right hand up. Okay? Up. Right hand is the God's life. Through incarnation, God came down. Now, left hand is our human life, okay? Now, see like this. Now, so in incarnation, God came and through our baptism, confirmation and the Eucharist, the most holy trinity, God's life, come, 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 come. Now, now, enter here, like this, like this, like this. Now, coming from up, Coming from up, entering into. Now God's life entered into your human life. Now what happened? The human life is transformed to God's life. So what happened to human life? It is no more human life. Man become God. That is the work of grace. Oh, now this lady missed this important thing, so I am going to do it again for you. <laughs> Very important. No, no, don't worry. I have kept you for in the fridge for you. <laughs> your, your portion. Your portion. Yeah. Yeah, now, this is the definition of grace. What is grace? Paragraph 1997 from Catechism. Grace is participation in the life of God. Now, life of God comes from above. So through incarnation, God become man. So that is what we receive in the baptism, confirmation, Eucharist. Now, right hand is God's life. Come on, you do it. You do it. Right hand up. Left hand down. Left hand is human life. Now, God's life. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Entering into human life and transforming human life to God's life. Now who are you now? You are God. You are a child of God. A child of God means? To be like God. You are another God. You have all what God has. You have a right to receive your papa's property. All what God has is yours. <laughs> That is anointing. You become a child of God. So, 
when we become a child of God, all what God has become our inheritance, our property. That's what anointing. We are not beggars, we are children of God. Amen. Of course, Saint Paul, Saint Augustine said we have to be like a beggar. That is to humble ourselves in asking. But we must have a confidence that through anointing, through baptism, through confirmation, through Eucharist, we become one with God inseparably. He cannot separate us. He cannot separate us because He came down to become man. And God become man. God become Emmanuel. So when incarnation took place, it's very interesting. He said, incarnation, incarnation, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. What is Emmanuel means? God with us. So in the incarnation, Jesus, that is God, the eternal word, become man. That is, the Son of God becomes Son of Man. Correct? Yes. So Son of Man becomes Son of God. That means in the Trinity, now what is the status of the Trinity? In the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son and the Holy Spirit. But how is the, how is the situation of the Son after the Incarnation? Son is Emmanuel. So what is in the Trinity? Who are all in the Trinity now? Say it. Father, Father God the Son. son. God the Holy so who is Son now? Who is with the Son? God, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Ah. Yeah. Oh, See that God. is what? Yes! <laughs> In the Son, not only God the Father and the Holy Spirit, the whole humanity is Emmanuel. In the Son. So where are we now? We are in the Trinity. <laughs> That is why we say in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So what we say is and us. Yeah. Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. We are drawing this upon us. So that means including us. The Father sent His Son in us. And what they did? They took us. They took me and made me changed my position from the left side of God to the right side. Now where are we now? We are in the right side of the Father. <laughs> in the name of the Father. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That means all this we are doing it because God made us worthy to be in the family of God. You know in some of the earlier time in my personal prayer I used to say, Papa, Daddy, I want to have breakfast with you. Yeah, 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 come sit with me. Oh no, I stand outside. No, oh, you are God's family. You are Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I am not worthy to sit with you to have breakfast. I will sit in the kitchen or in the outside. No, you have the right to sit with me. Come, come. And he made me to sit with Jesus and to have breakfast. <sighs> Can you imagine that? Because I am Emmanuel. Believe it. Believe it. If you go to heaven now, will he say, oh, Thomas, you stand outside, eh? we are having some private matter now. Will he say that? No. Or oh, come, Thomas. <laughs> Hey, darling, come sit here on my right hand side. I imagine what happens when I die. By the time that even before I die, there is such a big trouble in heaven. So many people come to Peter and said, What's happened? Today our Thomas Paul is coming here. Mm -hmm. Therefore we want to welcome him. We all heard his preaching. That is I. We came to heaven. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Very good. I am also coming. St. Peter says, let us welcome Thomas Paul. And so many people in heaven. 
because I preached more than 35 years now, converted many people, brought many people to baptism, and many people came to heaven. We can go to heaven like a good thief. What did he do? Nothing. The whole life he was doing sin. Amen. And at last ability he repented to us. The Lord said, today you will be with me in paradise of going to heaven. Like a good thief is not a big thing. <laughs> Our call is not that. Our call is when we reach there, Peter will ask, I know, how many souls you brought? Oh, with much difficulty I came here. <laughs> that should not be our answer. No. What is the discipleship means? We are disciples of Christ. Discipleship means we must work hard for the kingdom to get more souls and go with a big, like marching, like yesterday we heard, we saw the uh, group marching with the cross and band, all the things. Mm -hmm. It is like, that is how in heaven. Mm -hmm. That is how in heaven. We must march with a lot of our uh, fellow souls to heaven. Anyway, mm -hmm. all this I am saying because anointing. God has given us anointing mm -hmm. to work for God, to work with God, to work in God, and to do so many marvelous things. If you Google or in the YouTube, you can see a videos made by me that is called Jesus Wonder. That is an animation film. All the miracles of the Gospels are made in animation film. Even now, my staff is doing in that project. The project is continuing. And Many people do not know. Many people might have known this, this is, this may be a work by some American big company is doing. If people don't understand, even this can be done by a car. Healing of the leper. Jesus wonder. Jesus wonder. Yeah. One word. Jesus wonder. Jesus wonder. Jesus wonder. Jesus wonder. Look, a leper. Go away. How dare you come here? Master, don't touch him. Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. I will do it. Be made clean. First, we have to watch this. So, what I wanted to say, about 20 years back, the Lord told me to do this. I am not a script writer. I have no big uh, understanding of these things. But the Lord is telling me, all creativity comes from Creator. And I prayed and prayed and the Lord started showing me everything. And so I have engaged uh, design engineers. And of course, I also had a artistic talent. In my childhood, I used to do good painting, etc. Then I realized that carries some of painting. When I was a boy, 
Exactly. That is Jesus' word. That is. So, I am telling all these things because of the charisms. God has given us many charisms, but in a proper time, it must be used for the kingdom of God. Now, when I was a boy, incidentally that picture is with me, I did a painting. Painting, looking into a picture. Yeah. Send it to me, brother, and we'll have to get mm -hmm. it down here as well. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I don't know whether to... Be. Can you turn it? It's just in the door, yeah. How much is it? Big, no, probably. It is. Yeah, it's a setting. It's a setting. Don't worry. Anyway, I just... You did that. Hmm? You did that. You did I did this painting wow. when I was a boy. Yeah. Saint Thomas touching the oh, touching the wound of Jesus, you know. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's yeah. Very gifted. Yeah. Saint Thomas. Yeah. You're a Rembrandt, yeah. yeah. I, I sent it. Yeah. I send it. So my point is, as a boy, I don't know. I wanted to do that. I saw a painting. I felt I should reproduce this as a painting. And I did it. After many years, when I got this idea of doing the animation films, this thought came to me. Exactly the same way Instead of I painting with my hand and brush, I got it done through computer with the software and te uh, uh, be, uh, telling the people, do like this, do like this, you make a model like this, you make a background like this. That is how the whole animation film has done. Now, you, if you see, nobody in the whole world has done so much of animation film. Can you believe this, a Thomas Paul, wow. a small man? Wow. So you draw all them? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I have, most important in this animation is writing the script, then the storyboard and then the painting. That will, I have to engage a lot of staff. A lot of people have to work on that to do it. But now, it is in English, in Malayalam, in German, in Spanish, in Italian, in Hindi, in Arabic, in wow. so many languages. All this I am telling is about the anointing. I am not a computer engineer. <laughs> I am not a graphic designer. I am not an animation engineer. I am not a film director. But the direction of what I have done in this is from God. Amen. And it is, in this YouTube channel there are, there are uh, more than 100,000 or 125,000 subscribers of this wow. Jesus Wonder. 135,000 subscribers. And also many people downloaded this and making their own channel. I said that although there is copyright, nobody Ask me, they download it, I don't mind, okay, let it spread. So God will have so many new plans, new ways, new anointings, new ways of evangelization, new ways of evangelization. We don't know. Now this is even YouTube. Now, you see, all this technology, what we are doing, now you see, this is how you will see this presentation. Oh. Look here. <laughs> see this. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So all these techniques is for making a good presentation for the people. Now by tomorrow, hundreds of people will watch these videos and they will be benefited out of this. So not only what we do, the anointing 
will teach us to every day morning i also pray for all those who are watching this in the youtube so sometimes people see those all i saw a video of you oh, i feel this is different than other people's teaching uh, everybody's teaching is different but then it has some new understanding i was very much touched by that then i did a research then i found 30000 videos in your youtube oh my goodness <laughs> a priest is telling my whole lifetime will not be enough to watch this Thirty <laughs> thousand videos of best quality, complete retreat. Not one video. Every day I am uploading at least four or five videos in the YouTube. And I thank God for this platform, YouTube, internet, and all the thing. So we must utilize the technology. We must utilize the creativity. Uh, one very international film director came to me to discuss something. Finally, he said, "You spiritual people cannot be helpful for the media creativity and all." He was talking, and he was going. I said, "Wait a minute, Mr. Director. All your creativity come from the Creator." I don't know. It came from my mouth. Yeah. That is a prophecy. <coughs> He went to London for a very important uh, premiere show of his famous film. And after three days, he rang me up. He said, "Thomas Paul, what did you say that night? Now only I realize it. As an international film director, so successful I am." But all my creativity come from Creator. I realize it. I want to attend one of your retreat. <laughs> and he came down, and five days he attended my retreat. Then he stopped the production of the commercial film. Oh wow! He said, "My creativity belongs to the Creator. I want to use it for the Creator." it and all my creativity as an engineer as a whatever it is i am using for the glory of god and god see it, it, when you understand or those who know how to make an animation film it's a very expensive project another television channel Initially, I was engaging an animation company to do this, paying a lot of money. So that director of that company was invited to another television channel to make animation film. But listening to the cost, they said, "Sorry, we have no budget of this." Then this man said, "Okay, you want? It's a Christian channel. Do you want the animation film?" very good for children then you don't make it you simply ask brother thomas paul he will give you everything free of cost <laughs> oh. he got like a windfall i give it because god has given we don't have to sell it all this animation is so expensive you know The first time when I have shown this three minutes animation of this leper healing, many people told me this is what is needed for the present world. Amen. Children, children, yes. children. Yes. One woman said, "I have four boys, and I don't know how to give them some Jesus's message. This is what." And that woman said, "Thomas Paul, I will give." All the money I have in my bank for this project, <laughs> it was not much. But uh, what I wanted to say, her heart, yes. Yes. because yes. this is what is needed yes. for today for the society. Anyway, God has provided through every people, and so the project is 
The project is still going on now. The project is to make a, it's another big project, make a catechism school for children. School from kindergarten, from standard one, grade one, two, grade one, 50 such lessons for one year for Sunday school. Everything will be made in animated film. So we can have various languages, English, Spanish or any language. So we are in work of that. I am writing the script based on the Catechism of Catholic Church. So that's another interesting point you must know. After Second Vatican Council, there was many bishops synod. Now the synod is going on in uh, Rome. This is 15th or 16th synod. And like this, the first synod was on evangelization. The second synod was on catechism, how to teach the little children, how to uh, renew the catechism based on the teaching of the Vatican Council. We had Pope John 23rd's uh, uh, feast on day for yesterday. So, after that synod, Pope Paul VI died and John Paul II came in. And John Paul II was, he, it was his first apostolic letter on catechism. The title of that apostolic letter is Catechesi Tadande. Tadande. Catechesi Tadande means catechism today, in today's world, in the modern world, how to, what to teach to the modern children. The important thing in that was, in the paragraph number five in Catechesi Tadande says, the, the finding and the beauty of the whole Synod Vatican Council was to make the catechism Christocentric, Christocentric, beginning from Christ, beginning from Christ. Christ is the beginning of, he is the Alpha and Omega, he is our teacher, he is the first of all creation, therefore beginning from Christ. But even after 60 years of this Catechism Council, even now this is not implemented in our Catechism. Even now we are teaching Catechism beginning from the creation. God created Earth, God created Adam and Eve, God created all the... Thing. But Second Vatican Council has given this important change Catechism should begin from Christ. So it matched very well a little child. We explained how Jesus was born, how Jesus was learning, how Jesus as a little boy with the Mother Mary praying every day, singing psalms, praying our Father, reading scripture, helping mummy in the kitchen. And then the mummy said, this is salt. Uh -huh, salt. Uh -huh, salt. And that is what, even when he becomes 30 years old, he is preaching salt. Yeast, oil, fire, mustard seed, all these things he learned from his mother in the kitchen. Hmm? What do you think, such type of a catechism? <laughs> so that is what now I am doing another side to make a catechism according to catechism of Catholic Church and according to catechesi tadande. So problem is for the bishops or for the catechism department. In every diocese there is a catechism department. A priest is in charge of it. But to make any change in the existing catechism, who can do it? Whoever wants to do it must learn this whole teaching of the Vatican Council, whole teaching of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Amen. Nobody is spending so much time on it. I am the Lord's 
grace, I am in this more than 30 years. Every page of this catechism I know by heart almost. 30 years I am in it. So God asking me, you have to do this. Sometimes he telling, come on, do it. I want you to do it. I said, I can't. This how to make so many, how many videos I have to make. Class grade one, 50 videos. Like that, to cover the whole catechism, it will take at least 15 years of study. Grade one, two, three. So a boy from five years to 20 years of age, his growth, and then only the whole catechism we can teach. 15 years. So every year, 50 <coughs> videos. So 15 into 50, how many videos have to make? 750 animation films. Even one animation <coughs> film I am not able to make in six months. So much of work is involved in that. One finished already, brother. Yeah, one is already done. <laughs> so all this I am saying, <coughs> God wants to do new things. New things. God has given us creativity. God has given us wisdom. God has ideas. We only pray, Lord, give me your ideas. All creativity, come on, everybody, all, all creativity, creativity comes from the Creator. You can apply it for your children. Your children say, oh, I have a homework to do, this painting I have to do, I don't know how to do. Wait a minute. All creativity comes from the Creator. You pray a little time, then immediately you get an idea. That's it. And that idea you can do. Okay. Now, I don't know, the talk has gone in this direction. Was it helpful for you? Yes. Was it helpful for you? I needed to hear that. Really good. Really yeah. good? That is how the Holy Spirit leads us, you know. Okay. So now let us make a short prayer, then we will we will have a little break. And thereafter we are again going to make a, a little more talk on charism and we are going to make another workshop, okay? So let us pray. Focusing the Holy Trinity in us. He is the creator. <laughs> again, uh, catechism teaching comes to me in paragraph 292 says, God created everything through his two hands. His two hands are like Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The two hands are like wisdom and the Word of God. Oh, Holy Spirit, dwelling in our heart, fill us with your wisdom. Sincerely you pray, O oh, Holy Spirit dwelling in my heart. Holy Spirit dwelling in my heart. Fill me with your wisdom. Fill me with your wisdom. Fill me with your understanding. 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 Fill me with your creativity. Fill me with your creativity. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fill me with the fruit of the Spirit. Fill me with the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness. Patience, kindness, goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fill me, fill me. Fill me. Faith, hope, and charity. Faith, hope, and charity. Fill me, fill me, fill me. Fill me, fill me, fill me. Faith, hope, and charity. Faith, hope, and charity. Fill me, fill me, fill me. Fill me, fill me, fill me. Faith, hope, and charity. Fill me, fill me, fill me. Oh, Holy Spirit, dwelling in my heart. Dwelling in my heart. Open the charisms. Open the charisms. Knock. It will be open to you. We are knocking in knock. We are knocking in knock. 
the Holy Spirit. Open the charisms in us. Oh, Holy Spirit, open the gift of the word of knowledge. Open the gifts of the word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. Discernment of spirits. Discernment of spirits. Gift of healing. Gift of healing. Gift of miracles. The gift of miracles. Gift of faith. The gift of faith. Gift of the tongues. Tongues. Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. Gift of preaching. The gift of preaching. Gift of teaching. The gift of teaching. Gift of exhortation. The gift of exhortation. Gift of writing. Gift of writing. Gift of painting. The gift of painting. Gift of Singing, the gift of singing, gift of playing, the gift of playing. Instruments. instruments, the glory of God. The glory of God. Now let us all pray, praising God. Open all gifts in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open all the charisms in us. Open all the charisms in us. Hallelujah. Open all the candles in us. Anointing in us. Open the anointing. Everybody. Open the anointing. Open the anointing. Open the anointing. Give me oil in my life. Give me burning. Give me burning. Give me oil in my heart. I pray. Anointing. Anointing. Oil is the anointing. personal prayer, the Holy Spirit has given all this information. I am also wondering why I spoke all these things. <laughs> and you must see, when I am traveling, I travel with the su two big suitcases, with all the studio equipments. Now, today I have Michael with me many times, I am going alone. And I am alone fixing up the camera light and all these things. It is pretty hard work. Okay? So many times people say, Thomas Paul, you have become old, you should not travel with all these things. But I tell you, the Lord wants me to do that. Yeah. And I go with the camera and light holding in front of the blessed sacrament. I say, look here, Lord, what am I doing? <laughs> yes, myself, I bless you. Thanks. Because you are doing this, so many thousands of people are benefited. What I want to say is, if we have to really work for the Lord, we need a hard work. You have to work like a German. <laughs> so, in Germany, we always proud of their working style. Yes. They are Arbeit, Arbeit, Arbeit. Austria also. So maybe in Ireland also, all the Europeans have. Eh? Yes or no? So what we have to integrate is the work you do for other things. The same way you have to work for the kingdom of God also. When it comes to the kingdom of God, oh, no, I don't have time. If I have time, I will do it. If you call somebody for adoration, they will say, let me check my timetable. If after all the work, if I have time, I shall come for an hour adoration. Yeah. That is not the anointing. The anointing gives us first priority to God's work. First priority. 
This is what we have to understand. Priority, you have to check priority. What should I do? For God's work, you must consider first priority in charism, in working of the charism. Suppose a woman called me at one o'clock in the night and she started crying, I will die, I will die. Okay, you die, why do you disturb me? <laughs> I did not say that. I did not say that. But I was, it, it came into my mind. I had, I worked whole day, whole day, and so tired, I slept only at 12 o'clock, and 1 o'clock I am getting the phone call disturbing my sleep. But suddenly I said, she is in their need. Then she said, yes, yes, what happened to you? I want to commit suicide. I will die now. I will die now. And then I realized, who brought her to me? The Holy Spirit. This is where the urgency of our need, our ministry. Then I said, you will not die. I will die. No, you will not die. I will die. No, you will not die. <laughs> Then she said, why? Because God is in you. Right? God is in me. God is in the church. God is in the temple. No, you are a temple of God. God lives in you. Now better you sleep and come to me in the morning, okay? <laughs> no, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and morning she came to my office. <laughs> then I helped her through the counseling her problem. So this way it happens when we have the charism. <laughs> when God has given charism to us for gift of healing, gift of deliverance, all these things God wants us to do in an emergency, like an ambulance. Once you have the charism, you are like an ambulance. All other system will go away. You go for it. Amen. You have a charism. You go for it. Like an ambulance, all other don't think to change them. You have to go forward without uh, without uh, uh, considering all the uh, natural laws and other things because you have been asked for a task. You are you are a taskmaster. You know, in the engineering, I was a planning manager. I was known as a taskmaster. Taskmaster. I rule. Or I give command to so many people. And people were <coughs> worried that Thomas Paul is coming. <laughs> even there was say, even when the iron beams see Thomas Paul, it will bend. <laughs> Such capacity I had. Somebody said I there was 25 heavy workers, but they are not able to lift an iron beam. Then their supervisor said, I will call Thomas Paul. And they called me. I said, what's the problem? <laughs> no, we need more people. Why you need more people? 25 people here. Come on. Everybody, come on, lift. Come on. <laughs> then it lifted. <laughs> <laughs> what we need is one leader. A leadership. A united effort. You have to give a signal. Come on, everybody, hold and together you lift. <laughs> And it lifted. They were not able to lift with the same people when we united together, Amen. when a power is motivated, Amen. it came. And I never believed there is something impossible. Whenever I hear the word impossible, I will admit it. What did you say? <laughs> what did you say? Impossible. What is impossible? Oh, this is, no, 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 I will show you how it is possible. I never agreed to what is impossible. And I have shown in the engineering projects, in so many places, wherever people say it was impossible, I sat there, I prayed to the Lord, God gave me an idea, and within three days we implemented, it became possible. So it is all wisdom of God. And so, uh, why I say all these things? God has a plan for you to do something uh, 
something new. Something new. We have evangelization. It does not mean everybody take the mic and preach. Evangelization has so many varieties of new things needed now. For the children, for the teenagers, for the youth, Amen. for the families, for the old Different people need different ways and means. So everything, God, that is why in the Second Vatican Council speak about church in the modern world. <laughs> what is the difference? In the modern world, we need a modern way of evangelization. We have to have reasoning with our ideas. God's wisdom will help us. You have all the technology, we have all the intelligence, use all these things with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now we stop here. So once again, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the end of day. So now you go for a tea and come back in 20 minutes, okay? 20 minutes. That is by 11 o'clock, 11 5, you must be back. All those who are in watching this in YouTube, I pray for you, I bless you. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, keep me burning, give me oil in my lamp. Okay, God bless every one of you. Okay.